name's Kelly Cronin. I'm here participating on One Day on Earth on 10-10-2010. The current time is 12:21. We are in Boquete, Panama, here at Eco Project Rancho de Caldera. Now we use our solar gates to open up and come on in. Um, Rancho is one of the few resorts in the world that is totally on uh, off the grid. This here is the windmill. This pumps water, well water, to the fruit orchard and the greenhouse during the dry season here in Panama. This is the frame for one of our new panels. We're having four more of these put in. They each hold ten panels. They're unique because we're eight degrees north of the equator here. We actually keep our panels for about half the year totally flat. And then in uh, your summertime, we tilt them seven degrees north, and then in the wintertime, we tilt them 23 degrees south. Here, because we're so close to the equator, twice a year, the sun at noon is directly overhead and you leave no shadow on the ground. Come on, let's go down to the power. So here we are at the powerhouse. This contains the inverters and the brain for our electric system. It contains the storage of the batteries. It has the diesel generator in it. And this little offside here is that we're going to, in the future, be producing biodiesel here. So these are the inverters. They take DC electricity and change it into AC electricity. There's six of them here, so we have the capability of producing uh, 21 kilowatts at, at any given time. They're programmed so that only two of them remain on and the rest go into a, a, a safe mode uh, unless there's demand for power and then they automatically switch on within milliseconds of it. This is the, the circuit breakers for the DC side of the controls. This is the controllers for solar. Uh, so these control each of the three panels. There's two more of these going to be added when we add our 40 panels on. This is a computer. This uh, monitors how much electricity is being used, how much is being generated, and controls everything, does automatic shutoffs and everything like that. This is the controller for hydro. Um, and this is the controller for the wind generation. We have hydro about seven months of the year here, and the other two we get a little bit out of wind, but, uh, but solar is really our primary supplier of electricity. There is a backup generator here. The battery banks, the battery banks are quite interesting. This is the battery storage for uh, Rancho. Because we don't have you know days of really, really, really long cloudiness and things like that, we really only need to store enough electricity to operate 24 hours. Um, so that's what we have. We have 3,000 ampere hours of batteries here. These are 3,000 pounds a piece. There's six of them. They're together in series and parallel to create a 48-volt system with 3,000 ampere hours in it. Uh, we can use 1,500 ampere hours of the battery a day. We only want to take it down to 50% charge, um, and, and that's as low as we go. So this is, is the storage place. Where we collect all the water for the hydropower. Some of the water is diverted at the tap into the four-inch tube, which carries it down to the bottom to the hydroelectric generator and provides us our energy. This is the pool at Rancho de Caldera. The pool is kind of unique. It's partly salt water, and we have a uh, saltwater electrolysis in the pool to create chlorine, and that's powered off of our solar power. And then we have another uh, cup, two panels set here to power the, the pump, the water pump for the pool. So the pool is totally off the grid, only depended a little on our solar panels. These are the two solar panels that power the pool. Um, it's an interesting system. The pool pump is three phase. There is no battery involved in this. The panels are directly connected through uh, a, a converter to the pool pump. And as the sun comes up to uh, get the panels excited, the pool pump comes on slowly. And then at noon, when there's the most sunlight, the pool pump runs as fast as possible. So it's a very cool system. And you can see that the pool is crystal clear from just these two panels running the pool. My name is Craig Miller. I am the chef at uh, Rancho de Caldera.
Uh, it's an eco project here in Chiriqui, Panama. We are starting these four greenhouses in an attempt to raise our own produce. So we have two types of greenhouses here. One is made from bamboo. This is sort of a test for us. One is made from bamboo, a very sustainable uh, grass, the largest growing grass in the world. Uh, bamboo has can support more downward force than steel. Very, very, very strong material. Uh, here we're, this is our test plot. We're growing a number of things here. Things like uh, komatsuna, which is what you see here. This is komatsuna, an Asian green. Uh, it's from the cabbage family. Also, maizuna, this pointy green here, a little bit on the spicy side. Also, this is maibuna, another relative with a smooth leaf. We have some arugula growing over here. Also, we have two types of, uh, of spices growing. We have turmeric, fresh turmeric, which is far superior to the dried variety. And over on this corner, we have regular ginger, culinary ginger. Ginger grows very well in the tropics. You can see the flower down here. It grows very well in the tropics. So we use lots of ginger and uh, we use lots of turmeric. So we're trying to uh, provide our own here. There's no winter to, to kill off pests, so we have to find organic ways to control them. This project, the Rancho de Caldera Eco Project, we're using these yellow balls and covering them with the vegetable wax. And white flies are attracted to the color yellow. So we clean these off every once in a while and that gets rid of all the... We have a problem with nematodes in this area, which we're, uh, we have to remedy with organic... Um, Organic, organic remedies such as marigold, also solarizing the soil, which would be taking black plastic and putting it over the soil in a sunny weather, basically baking the soil, so you're killing fungi, you're killing uh, microorganisms. Uh, this is another interesting vegetable that we're experimenting with here, and you can see right behind me, it's growing very, very well. It's called a winged bee, uh, excuse me, a winged pea, or a winged bean, and this is the fruit that it produce, produces. If you break this open inside, you'll see these little, these little pea-like things. Very edible. There you are. What's great about this plant is that all parts of it are edible. The pod is edible, the seed is edible, the young leaves are edible, the roots are edible, and then these flowers here you can also use as a garnish, and they're also edible as well. Uh, tropical soils are notoriously poor, so we've found a good black topsoil that we've enriched with things like calcium and also an organic fertilizer made with uh, composted coffee beans that's inoculated with something called trichoderma. It's a fungus that eats other fungi and uh, helps soil health and also helps to prevent some foliar diseases. These are Meyer lemons. Meyer lemons are not something that you find in Panama. In fact, yellow lemons, period, are very hard to find. So we have Meyer lemons here. We have some blood orange down below here, which are just starting out. And then this plant here is called a miracle fruit. It's called a miracle fruit because it produces a red berry that when you put it in your mouth, it has no flavor. But if you roll it around in your mouth, there's a chemical, which they call miraculous, that blocks the human sensitivity to sour, so all you taste are the natural sugars and fruit. If you bite into a lemon, it tastes like lemon candy. Fascinating. We cycle uh, once a week, and um, we take cardboards and glass, primarily cardboard and glass and paper, um, up to the recycling center that's uh, in downtown Boquete. There's very little um, plastic to recycle, but we do recycle what we have. And the office uses um, all um, paper that's been recycled, and we're conscious about um, using recycled materials whenever we can. We do not have a lot of plastic. Uh, products to recycle because we don't serve any soda pop here. Uh, instead, um, Chef Craig has a, an assortment of delicious um, fruit drinks uh, that he makes for our guests. We are always trying to reduce our waste, and so of course um, a lot of that is has to do with composting all the uh, spare uh, kitchen scraps, which is what we do here. And it's actually going to go to our chickens, and it'll be re recycled through our chickens in the form of topsoil and compost to go back onto the plants in our greenhouse. So we've reduced our waste by a significant amount by composting. 
Uh, anything that comes out of the refrigerator that doesn't go into the compost, things like uh, chicken gizzards and livers and rice, oats, and all vegetables that are going back gets ground up and gets made into a, a dog food that we freeze.